knew I was going to do something one day about my own mouse. Like, I want to build something that's very, very profound and it changes the gu uh, guys' lives. I want to have all these women around me. I want to be traveling a lot, constantly growing. This is what I have for myself. This is what I thought in my mind. It was just like the blueprint. It was like, that's, that's what it is. But as I looked there, I forgot about what's here. The same like you. As you look there, you forget that there's something here that goes there. That's more important than actually where you're going. Because once you are able to be here, whatever expresses from that is going to be a joy. Whatever expresses from that is going to be more than fruitful. You know what you, you would actually become if you kept going? If you never got this question cleared up. You would become the really successful man who internally still doesn't know why he isn't happy. That's what you would become. Mm. And I really hate that image, so... Yeah. But you're heading towards that, though. Mm. That's the, based on what you're doing, you are. So many guys are, to let you know. You're not the only guy. To let you know. I was heading there. Who was with me in my grind phase? Who was a part of my channel when I had when I was like talking about I'm going to grind and I'm grinding? Who was with my channel during this time? You were? You can't be the only one. We're all, when did all you guys come to me? I started watching you. Natural guy, so. Okay. So that's the beginning. Do you guys, my image in the natural lifestyles is that I was the one that grinded. Mm -hmm. but that was grinding. Yeah, yeah, yes, that was my yeah, image. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I was rich yes, day, yes. Day. I would have became that man too. Mm. I would have. I was so meticulous, going out so much, doing so much, tired. I mean, days where I'm like, gotta do it though. Feeling like that and like building it and going and going and going and going and going. But there was always a part of me that was like, like how can that, express itself. How can it? Like it's there and I'm doing all these things but it's not happening. I'm going out and I'm doing everything. I'm doing all the videos. I'm learning. I'm reading three books in rotation every single day. Why is it that that is still expressing itself? And I'll feel frustration and I'll feel anger sometimes and I feel like yeah there's still more for me to do. Maybe it's just more for me to do. Because this is the only thing you can lean on. Because remember, when you're going from that position, you're going from striving in life and becoming the best, making something of complete value, something that's going to change the world. That's when I'll know that I've expressed it. That's when I'll know that this is expressed and it's not true. Any of you guys who are moving towards something in life, any of you, if you feel like I have to just do more, I have to just do more, I have to just do more, you're going to do a lot because your will will be unmatched. It definitely will. It would be unmatched. <clears throat> do you have guys who also go out with you? Well, sometimes. Yeah. And you're the one who does it the most, am I right? Mm. Like, you, like I say, if you were in a group of friends, you would be the one that would be doing it the most. Uh, the approaches or the... Uh, the approaches. The thing is that not necessarily the approaches, but uh, I'm doing this uh, more like in the, you know, like they go like maybe twice, three times a month, and I'm like, guys, it's like three times a week. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm saying you're the one that's doing the most mm -hmm. of it in your, in your group. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Because your will will be unmatched by those around you. It's just simply will. So that means that you're going to manifest being able to do a lot. But what about you, though? And this is what I had to come to. I want to do so much. When I was in that, pay, in that phase, I was like, I want to do so much. I really do. I want to be, I, I knew I was going to do something one day about my own. But I was like, I want to build something that's very, very profound and it changes the guy, uh, guys' lives. 
I want to make millions of dollars. This is what I was thinking in my mind. I want to have all these women around me. I want to be traveling a lot, constantly growing. This is what I have for myself. This is what I thought in my mind. It was just like the blueprint. It was like, that's, that's what it is. But as I looked there, I forgot about what's here. The same like you. As you look there, you forget that there's something here that goes there. That's more important than actually where you're going. Because once you are able to be here, whatever expresses from that is going to be a joy. Whatever expresses from that is going to be more than fruitful. Because the route you're going is fruitless. Because I started that route very, very strongly, man. Really. James was like, I've never seen this before. Very strongly, I started that. I did. And I was going and going and going simply because I thought that this is the way to be the ultimate man. If there's one thing that this community builds or the self-development community builds, is being the ultimate man. Your health, women, business, hobbies, whatever other thing. Become the ultimate man. But they don't tell you that having all those things is great, but that is what the world says is the ultimate man. They don't tell you that. They say this is the ultimate man, not this is what the world tells you is the ultimate man. You actually don't have yourself in this process. Because you're striving towards. So one of the greatest things that I've heard when I was back in the day was never settle. Keep going. Never settle. And I started to see that actually if you want to become whatever you're seeking, you need to settle. Not settle in the sense of don't do anything in life, but you need to settle. What happens when you actually just stop and you just slow all the way down? Do you feel like there's more for you to do? Um, I mean, it's uh, kind of uh, because I can really relate to both of the things you're speaking. I can relate to the part of me that wants to, to uh, like really, uh, you know, grind and everything. Mm -hmm. And it's not actually doing as much as it wants. And the part that is like, okay, I... I also kind of get in touch as well uh, with this grinding because I follow your content and it really inspires me a lot to mm. just like ground and uh, yours and others that have this kind of, uh, you know, um, more philosophy of getting mm. to like uh, who you really are and mm. uh, doing what you really want and everything. So I feel that there is kind of, uh, you know, these two parts of me that are, um, you know, like when I settle and everything, I managed to do it, uh, like, uh, I managed to do it, but not fully. Mm. There is always some part of me that wants to grind. Of course, yes. So that's the... Uh, that's why I said, when you're sitting there and not doing anything, is there a part of you that wants to do something? Yeah. Yes. That means that you don't know this totally. Mm. You probably can do this totally, but you don't know this totally. You don't know the settling. Yeah. If you don't know the settling, the doing will be fruitless. It will be pointless. Absolutely pointless. Is it because you want to be right? Yes. Why do you want to be right? Is your point right? No. Then, then why do you want to be right? I guess because I want them person to listen. You want them to know that what you have to say is of value? Yes, exactly. That's what you want. So what if somebody doesn't want to hear what you have to say or believe you. I don't care how many things I say. I don't want you guys to believe me. I don't want you to trust what I say. 
I don't want you to follow what I say. Never. Never do I want to. I don't speak from that place. I used to. That's because I felt like I had something to prove. That's what it is. You actually feel like you have something to prove underneath all this, man. When I actually felt like I had something to prove, yeah, I'd be like, yeah, guys, do you know that, you know, meditation can really change your life? Like, it really can. Like, if you were really there with it, you will, you will notice that you become lighter. You will notice that you're able to be freer in the way that you are. Speaking from that place and trying to prove to you that meditation is great, the only thing I can do and from that place is to see what the reactions are. Because the reactions then let me know to continue or to protect. That's what you do. That's why you react, because you're trying to protect the fact that you hold yourself valuable. You hold what you have to say, your point of view, your perception of life. You hold it of value, do you? Yes. And when somebody challenges that, you feel like what? You need to prove. Yeah. It's protection. If somebody don't believe you, they don't want to hear what you have to say, you then feel what? I've said haven't been taken on board. Into, into consideration. Yeah, into consideration. Because you take what they say into consideration. Not at the time, no. Okay. So your whole effort is to prove that you're right. Yeah. Yeah. So you're so you're actually attracting the perfect person for you. You guys are actually perfect in that moment. Because as you try to stay right, they try to stay right. Because in that moment, you're not being considerate of them, and you get angry when they're not considerate of you. So you're actually a perfect match for somebody who isn't considerate, actually. Because you aren't being considerate. Considerate simply means you're not judging. You judge their point as intelligent or not intelligent, or on some scale of standard. You judge their point that they're telling you. If it doesn't match up to what you feel intelligence is, or right is, or smart is, whatever it is, you then go like that, which is then inconsiderate. And then we express your point, which you, which you view to be high, and they don't consider it, then you feel the need to protect your point. It's a convoluted, actually maze. But it all stems from needing to protect yourself. Because you feel like this is a value, and in this moment they're not consider considering me, I need to take, protect what's valuable. Because if I don't, that means that I'm not a value. That's what it means. So your effort in life is probably, bro, around proving your value to others. Or proving yourself in some way. Not even to others, to women, too. Oh, him. Yeah. Uh, so I was asking you, like, if you have had experience, like, of being ungrounded and just really, yeah, because I said I've been going through, like, processes, like, just being really ungrounded from, like, various experiences I've had, and then it translates, like, the ungrounded just, like, translates to me, like, being really in my head. Mm. And then causing like tension, like when talking to people, or like a feeling of like disconnect from myself and like anyone in general. So like with women or just people in general. And so I'm like wondering, what was your, your process like of ha that experience, and like how did you overcome or move through it? And if you have like any particular individual suggestions for me.
Groundedness. Do you guys actually know what groundedness is? Can I hear some definitions from you guys? Like, what do you actually think or feel or from knowledge that you've learned from someone else that groundedness is? I'm just curious, actually. Okay. Stillness. Okay. Feeling in control. Feeling in control, okay. Being in your body. Like actually okay. feeling, having sense of feeling. Connected to basically the earth. Okay. To a flow of relaxation. Okay. Awareness. <coughs> in one moment, you could become grounded. In one moment. Groundedness isn't to let you know. Awareness. Because awareness is just total space. Awareness is just here. But groundedness, you have to understand, even the word ground, it has a lot of strength to it, doesn't it? So there's a strong aspect in this when you say groundedness. So when you're thinking about groundedness, you're thinking about strength. So how do I feel stronger is really the question. Because the path that I came from was feeling ungrounded, not grounded at all. Feeling like I'm on shaky ground. I thought if I had better mindsets, I would be more grounded. Yeah, I totally get that. So I adopted mindsets. But any mindset isn't stable. Mm -hmm. It needs maintenance yeah. for it to be alive. So what does that mean? It means that if there's something strong enough, it will knock you out of that mindset. And you need to maintain it by finding evidence to keep it alive. I started to see stuff like this. Then I went, okay, the mindsets, it's just, they're good, but it isn't the end. A mindset can bring you closer to, but a mindset isn't the actuality to let you know. Any mindset that we have isn't actuality. It isn't reality. The actuality, actuality as in here, yeah, reality yeah. is not. Right. It can give you a concept of reality. It can help you navigate through reality better, but it isn't reality itself. Mm -hmm. Are you someone who has adopted beliefs, has adopted mindsets, and want more? stronger mindsets to feel grounded. I actually just want to like let go of all belief systems and just be like and just be belief. Yeah, exactly. Like and I'm at that point where I just want to let go. Okay. So to let you know, and any of you to let you know, in one moment you can become grounded. In one moment. It's just what grounding point will you give your attention? Remember I told you the grounding point is this baby down here? Yeah. In one moment you can become grounded. It's just a choice too. Your feet are a grounding point. This is a grounding point. This is a grounding point. Your whole front side is as well. Anything that can be flat with the surface is a grounding point. It can be flat with solidity. With something that's solid, it is a grounding point. But remember earlier I said this, the spine is also a grounding point? Yeah, well, like, um, how do you, because I want to do actually something very similar to you, how do you keep balance uh, between uh, like doing this kind of job, you know, like uh, to be disciplined, 
but at the same time be settled uh, how to go find clients and market do marketing but at the same time staying true to yourself and to your values how do you find balance between all this like how do you manage uh, your flow with work and everything me specifically right yeah all right and how can it apply to Okay, I'll give you a small on me. It's very small, okay? So, I don't know if you guys know this, but do you know that everything that goes out, it's a product of me? Do you guys know this? Do you know this? I cut and upload the videos. I put out things to the list. I built the, the page for the, the, uh, for the talk. I well, Max helped me with the videos, but I do the videos during the week. All this, I do. And it's a joy, actually. It's not like, oh, fuck, another week. No, it's actually a joy for me. It is. It's a, in, in the midst of all this, I still do coaching. So it's, and it's all a joy for me. Why? Because the most important thing about this process is me. To let you guys know, I do want to help you. I do want to. I do want to guide you in the way that I can. But that's not my purpose in life. My purpose is to not help you. My purpose is to not guide you. It's not. That's just an expression from me. It feels the truest right now. To be doing this feels the truest to me. But in no way do I feel obligated to answer your questions. Do I feel obligated to help you? I want to. That's simply it. It's a joy for me too. Because guess what? I give you the chance to be free. It is. But at some point, I may move into another area of life. I'll go with whatever my nature takes me. I will. But I want to help you. I do. I want to guide you. So everything I do, man, it comes from expression, really. Me coming here and things like this, this is just an expression of the part of me that wants to bring others into being more free. That's what it is. I haven't set myself up in a way where I'm like, okay, this year I have to help these many guys and this, this, and this. I'm like, mm, no, this year I want to make this amount of money and I want to uh, help guys I do. Uh, what capacity do I want to help at? I want to help at this, so I'll only allow 20 guys to come, this, this, and this. Because if I really felt obligated to it, I'll be like, however many amount of guys can come and all these different things, but I don't. Even when I'm doing, because you said marketing and stuff like this, even when I'm doing sales calls, I am, which I did with him. Yeah, even when I'm on a call, like telling the guy about what I do, in no way do I feel like, okay, I gotta get this sale. In no way do I feel that. Like. I've learned sales things, I've learned, you know, things about different sales stuff, which is actually when I look at all of it, I just go, if you don't know yourself, you'll become a sales weirdo if you don't actually know yourself. Because sales has some really, some shit in one left like, fuck, if a guy really doesn't really feel that, it's going to sound so gimmicky. So gimmicky, it is. So when I'm talking, so when I'm, when I'm talking to a guy, I remember one guy I was talking to, he was like, hey man, I mean, yeah, he, he, called, he was even calling himself a pimp. And I was like, all right. Then we, so we get on the call and the whole time he's like, so are you going to have me approaching a lot? I'm like, man, you've been doing that and getting flaked on. Like, I'm not interested in teaching you how to approach a lot. You need to be there longer with the girl so she can feel that you want her, actually. Because you just want to just keep doing, yeah, man, but how many am we going to do? I was like, it's probably like unlikely that he's going to, I'm going to do coaching with him. And guess what? He's like, yeah, I'll get back to you. And he never got back. I knew he wasn't, though. A part of me knew it. But when I'm talking to a guy on the phone, like Sergio, when I was talking to you, did I sound like right now, or did I sound like a sales guy? No, you didn't sound uh, like a sales, a sales guy, but more sort of trying to get 
uh, interested in um, building games that are able actually to help them. Right? Now asking me questions and uh, kind of I felt that I can uh, trust trust a person with opening up my my issues, my uh, sort of deeper myself. And yeah, basically that's my that's my effort in trust. The most important things about when I was talking to him is if he can trust me, he will want to do it. Trust comes from truth. We trust people who tell us the truth. We just do. Whether they tell us it's something we don't like or, or they tell us something we do like, we trust them. So I'm co I come from the premise not of, okay, I got to get the sale. I come from the premise of, I know this is, I want to help him. I know I can. Is he willing? If he's not willing, that's fine. I've even said to guys, I don't know if you're even going to do coaching with me, but if you decide to do coaching with me, and that's true when I'm saying that. I remember, I remember I was in, out night, at night with a girl, and when I took her home, I was like, this happened last year, I was like, we don't need to sleep together tonight. She was just like, yeah, I just, you know, I've just been hurt and I just don't want to be naive again. And I was like, I knew you was afraid of being hurt because the whole night you were afraid to look me in the eyes. And then she was like, hmm. Then I was like, don't worry, we don't have to have sex tonight. If you really don't want to, we don't want to, but I do still want to give you a massage and I still want to hang out with you. She's like, yeah, but what, what can I give you? She was like, then went into this moment. Like, what can I was like, open this. And she was like, oh. I think, you know what that is? Yeah, I know what that is. And then <laughs> we continued on and through the night it led to her saying, all right, like, all right, I'm going to give you a massage. She's like, okay, well, can I get in the shower first? And I was like, yeah, you can get in the shower. And I was like, can I get in with you? And she's like, yeah. So we got in the shower and we didn't touch each other the whole time. <laughs> we just like two, it looked like two friends in the shower. It really did. <clears throat> and I was really coming from the position of this girl really don't want to have sex. I won't. Like, I don't need to fuck this girl, but I want to. But I don't need to, though. And, of course, it led to sex. I'm not even going to say, like, all that and be like, yeah, should. no, it, led, it definitely led to sex. It did. But it wasn't from the, the place of me saying all that so that I can get. It was the truth. I wasn't saying those things to him on the phone so I can get. I really want to help him. It's, a, it's what's true to me right now. And he can feel that coming through me as I speak to him on the phone. You guys can feel that I actually want to help you as I'm here with you. I'm not here and simultaneously thinking about what I'm going to eat later. I thought about that on break, but I'm, I'm, not, I'm not here right now in this moment thinking about that. That's the place that I come from, is the foundation of what feels true for me, moment to moment? And I live that. And I am interested in living that more totally <coughs> and intensely. I am more interested in that. So it comes from that place. Yes, I have things that I want to do. And I go after that. Like in the beginning of the year when I said I want to do this and I want to do this and I want to have these many workshops and this. Yes, that came from me wanting to do something. But it stemmed from what was actually true for me. I would never give myself a schedule just to give myself a schedule. I'm like, what do I actually want to do this year? I want to help guys. I do. What capacity do I want to? I want to do these many workshops. I want to coach every other week. I want to do London. I want to do Chicago. I mean, I want to do New York. I want to do Berlin. And I just started doing it. Now I'm here in London. It started from beginning of the year, me looking at, I want to do London. <coughs> And now I'm here. But I'm totally here because I want to do it, not from obligation. It's the difference. When you're coming from you want to, it's true to you. When you're coming from obligation, there's a feeling of, OK, next thing. And just, I don't even like the word discipline, to let you know. The word has been bothering me all my life, this word discipline. Yeah, like, I, I don't even like the word discipline because when a person thinks of themselves of like being disciplined or anything like that, they then become rigid. It actually 
instills rigidity in many ways. Like, do this, do this. I said I was going to do this. If I don't do this, then there's something wrong. Fuck discipline, really. What do you want? Follow that. Be willing to adjust based on circumstances. Otherwise, follow that. Follow through to its resolution. If you want to travel to this place because you've never been there, set that in your aim. But let's say that something happens where you can't do that. Great. It's still in your aim, but you have to deal with this before you get there. I want to go out every single day and approach women. Great. Go out every single day and approach women. But sometimes you will be going through something emotionally where if you try to do that, it will be actually against you than with you. So keep it in your intention. Keep it in your directed path that you want to go. <clears throat> but don't stay rigid to what it has to look like along the way. If it shifts and change, <clears throat> if it shifts and change based on real circumstances and based on what you really feel, it's perfect. It is. Because everything along the way is going to teach you about staying the course of your intention anyway. So I don't care about discipline. I don't. I used to think of myself as like a disciplined person or have a lot of discipline. Yeah, you can call it that. You can. But sometimes I've said to myself, you know what, I'm going to put out three videos this week. And I put out fucking one video. I've said to myself, you know what, I'm going to put out four videos this week and four videos next week. I did four videos and none. Just like this week, I was like, I'm going to, I could put out four videos, but where am I going to upload the videos at? Because I wanted to do that this week, but I'm like, where am I going to upload the videos at? I'm going to stressfully look around London so that I can upload a video. Can't do it. I'm in a hostel. I'm not, I can't, the, the Wi-Fi sucks in there. I'm like, I can't do that. So I just have to adjust. But you have to understand that anybody who says discipline and stays the course of that, and without like ever wavering and ever switch, they're really becoming rigid in many ways because that's not life. Life isn't rigid. It's a very flowing thing. Structure only provides something for more flow. But if structure blocks flow, then it's not fruitful for you at all. It fucking wears you out, huh? Well, the opposite of judgment is living. That's the opposite. When you're, when you're, yes, notice the moments when you're judging, you're placing things in categories, all right? The opposite of judgment is fully living. That's the opposite. When you're living, you have no chance to judge. You just take things as they are. You have to understand that when you are favorable, when you have favorites, I favorite people who are nice, and I don't favor people who are mean. <clears throat> when you're like that, the moment you see somebody and they look a bit scruffy, I'll judge that person. And people go, the first thing we do when we see somebody is judge them. You're right. That's the first thing we do based on the unconscious. We place them in a the category right away. But I know you guys have judged people and they've turned out to be different. I know you've judged a situation like this and it's turned out to be something else. Judgment actually keeps you at a distance. It does. When your world on the inside is based on judgment, it keeps you at a distance. It doesn't actually allow you to get close to somebody. Judging them puts them at a safe distance. Not judging them puts them at an unsafe distance because they're unpredictable now. So you fear the unknown. That's why you judge. Many people don't know this, but you fear the unknown, so you judge. Let's say you were just like, I'm open to everything. I'll say yes to everything. Immediately you're like, I'm, I'm the fucking dumbest person on earth. That's how everybody feel like. I, if I don't judge, then I'm dumb. Yes, you are dumb. Become dumb. Really. Why do you want to be so fucking smart? Why do you want to... Okay, this person is like this, 
this person is like this, I can live my life. Oh, this person is like this, I can live my life. Okay, this person is like this. Why do you want to do that? Stay in the middle. When you're in the middle, it looks stupid. It looks fucking stupid. It does. But what other choice do you have then to stay there? Really? Yeah, so it's really just a fear of the unknown. It's like if I accept this person, that means that my judgment was incorrect. We like being right when we say, I think he, he might be dangerous. I'll keep him over there. We like being right when we say that. But the moment he goes, hey, man, and he's like scruffy. He looks at me. Hey, man, how's it going today? We're like, your whole fucking world then turns upside down at one moment. And the surprises are happening all the time, especially with races and everything. We view one race to be like this, and then they turn out to be something else. We view this person to be like this, and they turn out to be something else. I used to walk down the street like girls who wear makeup and shit like this, they're like really uppity and they don't like talking. And then I met, I remember I was, I was like that and I met a girl walking through and she was like fucking feminine and she was into yoga and doing this, but she was wearing like this fur coat and she was walking through, I'm like fucking. Then I, I walked up to her and I was like, excuse me, she was like, yes? And so open, I was like, oh, this is fucking great. <laughs> That's all I felt in the moment. But I had a strong pattern, though, of girls are like this, they're like this. Because some guys see a girl with like all makeup on and like dressed like this, and she's like, immediately she's a bitch. Like, no. Some girls, with your own awareness, you can be like, yes, yeah, she probably could be like that. That's based on your just awareness. But when you stay open to it, you allow yourself to be proven wrong. You do. Now, I'm not telling you to be unaware. Like, if you see somebody standing there like this, and you're just like, oh, I'm just going to be open. And you go through and he fucking hits you. I'm like, no. You were aware that he had a tendency to fucking do that. So why did you walk close to him, All right? No, that's using your awareness. It's different. But when you go, he's a bad person, though. No. Of course, you, it's still keeping you safe from not, him not doing something to you. But when you go, he's a bad person, you're forgetting that. He also has the same side you have. And that's what I was saying. Like People in prison are no different than us. Really. People have all these judgments. We do. We have all these judgments. And it's all to keep us safe. It really is. But I tell you that the more and more you get to know the unknown in yourself, the more and more you'll, you nat naturally judgment falls, starts to fall away, the more and more you get to know the unknown in yourself. Because remember, the judgment is happening from, this is who I am. Because remember, this is, when you say this is who I am, you now have right and wrong from that place. Because this is right and wrong, when you say this is who I am. That's built off right and wrong. That's built off the image. So you're going to see the world through that image. This is right, this is wrong, this is not good, this is good, this is not good. She's good, she's not good, and you're going to always do that. But the more and more your image loosens, the more you're going to notice that the vision becomes clearer.